逃げずにこのディオに近づいてくるのか試験終了チャイム直前、えVideo was blocked by Toei. Remember, folks, even if you love their products and are trying to get more people to watch their shows, they will F you over because they don't understand the concept of fair use over here. By following the rules, you're guaranteed to make a mediocre product that no one can relate to. With that said, I'd like to point out a fun fact about myself. I'm a huge fan of Tokusatsu, more specifically that of Kamen Rider. It's part of the reason why my online moniker has Kamen in the name. Kamen means mask in Japanese, and considering I haven't revealed my face on the channel, I felt it was appropriate to name myself that. But it was also due to the fact that I'm a huge fan of Tokusatsu. However, whenever I would talk about this series in any capacity, I just want to yeah! Like, even the Christmas special I did a few years back with heavily edited clips, shortage of using the clips from the actual show, and actually, you know, using mostly my original footage, they still felt the need to block it. How dare you! That kind of stuff really pushes you away from wanting to make content related to that topic in regard. And hopefully this video won't share the same fate. I guess what I'm saying is, YouTube! FIX YOUR DAMN SYSTEM! But I'm willing to deal with that headache so I can actually spread awareness of the new show that I'm talking about. Because I for one feel as though it's something that a lot of people don't know about, and frankly I want to see the series get more support and attention from audiences outside Japan. Especially considering the level of effort that's been put into this show. <laughs> to make it clear, this is a kid show. Um, I mean, I've seen worse from this series? Oh no, I have been shot in the back. Here, boyo, take my ad for safekeeping. Hey, boss! But if you ask me, it has a lot better action to it than a lot of American-based movies, but we'll get into that later. This, my friends, is Kamen Rider Zero One, the latest in a long line of long-running meta-series from Japan known as Kamen Rider as well as being part of the newest era of television in Japan, the Reiwa era. For the unindoctrinated, the series starred in 1971, originally created by the late manga artist Shotaro Ishinomori, who you might know for his more worldwide work, Cyborg 009, as well as his contributions to Astro Boy. Shotaro's work was used for the basis of the Kamen Rider series and has been going on for almost 40 years. There was a bit of a break in television appearances in the 90s, although I'd wager that most of you might be familiar with the two American adaptations. Fast Rider. Fast Rider. On a distant and embattled planet called ah! Eden. Yeah, let me assure you, the quality of those shows doesn't measure up to the original source material. And it's sad that the more normie status of the Western audiences would view Kamen Rider as a cheap Power Rangers knockoff. People have been doing it for years. But really, that comes down to Safan's cheap history. Well, that and the fact the material was handed so poorly to the point where they took unrelated footage from two Kamen Rider movies and spliced them into the series known as Masked Rider. Shut 
showing just how incompetent the Kamen Rider series was handled by Saban. But I'm getting off track, I think I've made my point. Saban sucked. Essentially, Kamen Rider is a traditional live-action superhero show done on a weekly basis, and Zero One is the latest incarnation of these heroes. You see, the series is a bit of a tradition that's been prevalent ever since its reboot all the way back in the 2000s, and that every year there will be a passing of the torch. With a new cast, a new writer, and a story that doesn't necessarily have the same continuity with the series that came before it, even though there may be a few hints of continuity here and there. Think of it like Doctor Who, where they would change the Doctor's actor, but to varying degrees. I don't want to go! And each writer has their own unique flavor and story, and they have a wide array of stories and characters that can be appealing to a lot of people. You want an orange samurai? BAM! You want ghosts? BAM! You want a cop drama? Here you go! You want video game based hero? You got it! Okay, I think I've tanked everyone's retention when it comes to the history of Con Rider. I think it's time to actually talk about the actual show I'm talking about. Finally! Zero One takes place in a futuristic version of our world, to the point where we have robotic companions who are pretty much indistinguishable from actual humans due to their outer coating. <laughs> Think of it like uh, Detroit Becomes Human, you know, that David Cage game that was pretty bland and went for the most generic storytelling with it and stuffed it with morals down your throat, only instead of getting the perspective of the machines, we're following the perspective of humans. Which is especially true when we see that the androids, the human gears, are taking real-life jobs from actual humans. They took our job. Heck, it's one of the first things we see concerning our main protagonist, Aruto Hiden. Then again, I think it's totally unfair that you compare a human with... <laughs> and as you can imagine, something like this becomes a major part of the plot. We're told this fairly early in the episode, and I have no doubt in my mind it'll become a major plot point. Hell, we even see in the first episode that there was an incident involving the human gears years ago. Back to our main character, Arto has a dream of being a stand-up comedian to make people smile. Unfortunately... You know what I love the most? Referential humor. Boo, you stink! In addition, he's been thrust into a position of power that he doesn't want, inheriting the presidential status of his grandfather's company that made the Huma Gears. You must become president for the company. No. I actually find Aro to be a very relatable protagonist in that regard. How many of us want to achieve our dreams but can't do it? Due to it being a lack of talent or having obligations that'll take priority over our dreams in order to survive for the greater good? or that we just don't have enough money to actually make it go through. And it's something that Arto has to deal with, when the comedy-based robot that took his job goes rogue, attacking humans, even infecting other human gears into attacking as well. <laughs> with no other choice but to protect, Arto puts his dream to the side and accepts the Zero-One driver to save others and become Kamen Rider Zero One. I think one of the biggest draws of the introductory episode, and one of the main reasons why I'm talking about it, is with me setting the aesthetics and the show are really showing to be top notch, especially for a kid show that's done on a weekly basis. As well as the choreography. One of the most important aspects in a show like this is the action. After all, it's a superhero show about saving the day from super powerful robots. The fight scenes are what really make it a treat to enjoy, especially with the interesting angles and the continuous camera shots. Not to mention, it really makes a memorable scene when you've got the character running through a bus that's thrown at him. And it's not like Aruto's made to be a perfect hero, even if he does get, like, AI support. The show makes a bit of a point to showcase that he's still getting used to the power. Which grounds the show in some believability as well. After all, I'm sure if given this sort of power, most people wouldn't be experts right off the bat, especially if they don't have any previous combat training, especially considering what may happen in the next few episodes. I also want to talk about the designs of the show, the first being the Zero One suit. If there's one thing about Conrad I can give it credit for, is that they know how to make some really good superhero costumes. And it can be as simple as Conrad builds or W's with a dual color scheme, or as complex as drives or wizards. Zero One takes a page from the more simple side of the design branch, going for a more minimalistic choice, mostly focusing on a black suit with yellow armor that gives him the grasshopper aesthetic more credence. Don't get me wrong, I like complex designs, but that doesn't mean simple designs are bad or automatically bad. In fact, I love Zero One's design. Black and yellow was a great color combination, and a nice little touch. 
Apparently it glows in the dark. That's sweet. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a huge fan of the corrupted Huma Gear designs. The head for the first enemy is a bit too big for my tastes, but I do have to say that I like the mooks. They actually look pretty intimidating, especially with their skeletal base design and the overly robotic faces under their masks. And I'm sure we'll see other robotic monsters who are better looking than the first one in later episodes. Heck, looking at episode 2, we already got better designs already. Honestly, there's a lot I could say about the first episode, but I really enjoyed it. The main character is likable, if not a tad bit annoying, the action is great, and I'm digging into the designs of the characters. Oh, and I like how the series is a bit darker than previous series, too. I'm not saying dark themes automatically equate to quality, but it's a nice little appreciation to see actual guns and there being an actual military sector out there who are actually going to combat the robotic threat. One of which is using a gun that, hmm... Yeah, that's our next common Rider. <laughs> Most of the time, you don't really see much of an impact from police officers. I mean, they're pretty much useless list, but it's good to see that actually showing in this in the first episode. Again, it's the first good opening episode and I do recommend it. If you do want to check it out, please check the links in the description that I provide. You can get the episodes from either site and completely sub. I do hope you guys can show some support for the show, and maybe we can get its creators to bring the show to the West. I mean, when the first episode was aired, they actually didn't make it region-specific on YouTube for the first few days. But now that's changed, so who knows what the hell's going on. I'm Manga Common and thanks for watching, and remember to examine your fandom.